Oh. All right, so you guys should have this uh, pop-up message that says it's recording. And we will get started. So it's 6.06 now, everybody, hello. Welcome to Airbnb Super Hosts in three months. I didn't know this was possible. And uh, now I know that this is totally possible for me and for you as well. So let's just do a little warm up session. I know the people who came in earlier, you know, said where they're from. It looks like mostly California group, um, but we can do uh, tell me where you're from without telling me where you're from with two words. Um, I'm going to say my two words. It's uh, extended lockdown. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys can see, I, I kind of did a, it's an Asian country, yes. And unfortunately it is very locked down at the time of this recording. Okay, awesome. Uh, I, Bree, I see your email, so I'm going to send it. Anybody else? Nobody likes to participate. This is just like school, okay. Um, but anyways, in the next 60 minutes, uh, you're gonna learn what super host is. Why does it even matter? Did I just make up this word? Uh, what are the top criteria for super host and how, was, how I was able to do in three uh, months and then how you can get there fast. And then we're going to do um, some Q&A. So you may be wondering, who are you? Why should I even care? Uh, so I started Airbnb on October 1st of last year. I hit super host in January 4th of 2022. And then I got super host again, actually, basically a week ago. And that was crazy because I didn't even have a listing active. So as you can see, if you do this once in the right area, if you don't um, do something too crazy, they actually will let you keep the status for some reason. But, you know, um, this was how much I earned during that time, um, three months, um, if you take away what I was paying for rent and utilities and stuff, averaging about 2K a month. So it's not um, rocket science. It's just picking the right properties, looking at the right locations, doing as best as you can, decorating for your audience, pricing it correctly, and getting to this level. And obviously, when I go to the Airbnb uh, Superhost Facebook pages, some of them are making, you know, six figures and, you know, some of them have already retired and are millionaires. I'm not, but I also think in these short, like six months or so, I've learned a lot and I, and I want you to learn as well. And you can see like the ratings are not like insane. Like, yeah, there's five stars there's, you know, four stars. And obviously you want to have um, five stars if possible, because if you have a three stars, like on Yelp, you think, okay, three stars is not that big of a deal, but on Airbnb, literally three stars is going to basically set you back a lot. So we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that you are mostly at five stars because the rule is like 4.8 basically. So I'm the founder of Super Fast BNB. I'm a two times Airbnb super host. I can't spell. Uh, three years of experience as a landlady. I still have a long term rental, so that is my experience. And um, recently licensed as a California real estate agent, as of yesterday. So people are like, okay, what does super host mean? Um, this is what I searched in my area of Irvine. So it looks like forty seven hundred a month. 188 a night and book 25 nights a month and please look up in your area if airbnb is legal or not because um technically this is not okay right now but i'm not a snitch i'm not going to say anything personally i think you should be able to do whatever you want with your property but i do think you want to check in with your city to see what it's like because you don't have to do it in your city you can do it you know a couple cities over you can also do um you know uh maybe another county over that's a little bit more relaxed but this is what they're showing me right now so imagine you making 4700 a month 188 a night booked 25 nights a month would that be cool 
I don't know. So just a bit of a timeline. So I don't want you to think you have to take years and years to make it. Um, I started like seriously hunting around August and in September, I secured the lease for the rental. So if you want to learn more about the scripts on how to convince somebody to rent it out to you, um, I can share with you a little bit later, but I do want to keep this more in terms of just like Airbnb super host status. And in November, basically making 10K and being in Airbnb for basically 30 days. In January, I was super host. And then April, because uh, this quarter, I was literally just studying for my real estate exam, couldn't do much, was trying to find another place. But I was able to get super host again. So I really emphasize in the beginning, if you do things right, they'll just keep it that way. And this is my listing. Um, as you can see, staging is super important. Somebody asked me about photographers. I will say like, you don't have to make your whole area absolutely amazing, but I would say at least two or three, air, uh, maybe like at least one, you know, preferably two. So it's not just the same place to make it photogenic. And pricing, uh, you know, there it depends on your location, but it, it is totally possible in three months for you. It doesn't have to take forever. So they say the benefits, uh, because you get a little badge, they also push you up, you know? So you know how like business owners are always obsessed about, oh my God, how can I get to number one on Google search? How can I beat out my competitor? They're like buying ads of their competitor so they can get further up. So it's same for you. If you get super host, they know that you are a trusted person. They know that you are going to take this more seriously. You're somebody that they can trust. So you want to think about how can I get to super host as quickly as possible? Because you're going to add, you're going to get booked more often because you look at Airbnb, you ask yourself, hey, am I looking at page 20 or page one? You know, and you can be attractive to more guests and you also get exclusive rewards. I have not yet received an exclusive reward, but for not doing anything for three months, uh, it's not bad. <laughs> so they evaluate every quarter. So right now they just finished evaluating. So obviously if you start, if you want to time it, I would say literally just start now so that on July 1st, you're able to be evaluated. Um, typically they evaluate on the Monday. So basically it's not January 1st, but more January 4th not April 1st, but April 4th. So it's like you totally can fast track, but in that period of time, you want to make sure that you hit as many of these criteria as possible. So does anyone have any questions so far? Am I going too fast, going too slow? <clears throat> so, all right, so I'm gonna keep going. Let me know if you guys can see this. So you have to complete at least 10 trips or three reservations that total at least 100 nights. So what does that mean? I would really opt for 10 trips first because 10 trips could mean one one-nighter. And last Thanksgiving, I was literally booked back to back. Like, you know, on Thanksgiving day, I was booked. Friday, I was booked again. Um, the Saturday after, it was just the most busy I'd ever been. And it's harder to clean up than just like one person booking three nights because you only clean once. Whereas if you get three one-nighters, you literally have to clean every single time. So I would really recommend you to get 10 trips because 100 nights is going to be harder unless I guess you get booked for like three months or something. By that time, you're making so much money then that it probably shouldn't matter that much. And then for 90% response rate or higher, that means every time they message you, you have to be responding. So don't leave them hanging. Like, don't let them be the last person in the message. Like, you know, like having the last word, like this is having the last word. So make sure that you have the Airbnb app installed because they actually measure the time it takes for you to respond. Like the faster that you respond, the more Airbnb rewards you. So I would say literally answer your text. Unless you're driving um, in the beginning, please just buckle down and answer their questions as fast as possible. And then the next one is maintaining a 1% cancellation rate. So literally just don't cancel. So I had people, 
I had to give money back to people that they weren't really happy, but I knew that if I had a bad review, I would be screwed. So if you have somebody who's truly unhappy, and I had a guest who was literally like looking in my closets and saying like, your sheets are damp. And um, she was just like looking in different places. And I was like, you know what? You know, I'll, I'll just give you a refund. Um, can we just like, can you just not review and let it go? And she's like, okay, fine. So obviously this is not, you know, bottom line, it's not great, but I did get super host with, uh, because of that. So you want to balance out, like, what is something that you're willing to sacrifice in the beginning so that you have a good reputation afterwards? So 4.8 overall rating, that's like, basically you have to get like 10 five-star reviews. You can get like one. Right. And then based on the date, the guests left for review. So I would really encourage you in the beginning, please try to get like a really good guest. Like I had somebody who priced it too low and then she got somebody who was, you know, basically a super care. And she was like complaining about a hair on the bed. And I've been to my friend's place. It is freaking immaculate. So there are people who are who are going to take advantage of you for that. So if you have friends and family who would be willing to book it through your site and just leave at least one good five-star review at the beginning, I think that would help you out a lot. So it's up to you whether or not to decide. I didn't have the luxury of that option. So thankfully I got like the very first two guests, they did not leave any reviews. So obviously that's not going to help my, um, you know, getting booked, but the third person did leave a really good review. And from that, more people are going to trust. So the first review is the most important. If you can just get like a friend or family to just check in, leave a five star, that's going to do wonders for you. Because if you have a bad review from the start, you're not going to be likely to get booked and you're just going to get buried more and more deeper down the line. And we don't do not want that to happen. So oh, I should have I should have just showed you guys this one, but it's really the same thing. I would say really focus on really hitting it out of the park for your first three guests. Um, and that also includes um, making your photos. Just please hire a professional photographer. If you're in LA and you want a recommendation for my photographer, I will give it to you. But basically try to get booked as much as possible enroll a friend or family member to at least get one five-star review. I feel like that would really help a lot. Always, always respond. Do not leave them hanging and basically never cancel. Um, because even just if you cancel one out of 10, that's like 10% cancellation rate, right? And one out of 100, I would say like, don't even do automatic check-in in the beginning because you don't know who's going to book you. So you want to make sure that in the beginning, you screen them. You know, you, you make sure that they message you, you ask a little bit about them and you want to make sure that they're not going to be super duper annoying to accommodate. And obviously in the beginning, you might, you know, let some of it go. But if this person is clearly going to be, you know, always crying out for refunds and always nitpicking, it's better to just say you're... Uh, you're, I don't know, book with something else. So it just basically make sure to turn them down nicely and then give your first three guests the absolute best service you can because the beginning builds confidence for you and for the other clients. And obviously we can't control what happens, but it's better if you just, from the get-go, make sure that they're good. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my criteria for the Airbnb, because if you're in a good location, you're going to be good. So I would say you want to target areas that have business and recreational tourists. You want to have a 70% occupancy rate with a thousand plus monthly rental income. So you want to look at air DNA, um, no bad neighbors, Make sure to go there at night, you know, because sometimes daytime, nighttime, totally different. Yes, you're driving out a little bit extra, but you want to make sure, hey, is your Airbnb guest staying in a place that's going to be safer at night? Sometimes the place is super windy. Sometimes there's, you know, music playing in your neighbor. So you want to make sure that you vet that. 
at or below 3k a monthly rent i know it's the market's crazy right now but you can go to other places maybe two or three hours driving i have my airbnb like 39 minutes away so if you're willing to go a little bit further out you can actually get really good deals and please don't don't deal with hoas hoas was a downfall for me and i don't want it to be the downfall for you um, minimal carpet for cleaning and then photographs while and appliances are relatively modern so if you guys um, want to check out your area for air dna <clears throat> you want to search for 70 percent occupancy rate because if you're not getting booked sometimes it's the area you know sometimes the area is just really bad so instead of sinking in money and being stuck in a place that doesn't have anyone you want to look at where you can have 70% occupancy rate, 20% or 2000, 2K cash flow. And you want to look at, you know, are they near the airport? Is it near a Costco? Is it near a good school? You want to be able to know everything that you can. And my area ended up being pretty popular for like um, soccer tournament people and like rave people. But if you don't look at it, you never know. So do your research beforehand. And alternatively, maybe just rent out a room in your house. You know, she rented out her own condo. She took two days to repair the place. And then she was basically really booked out after two days after listing it. So obviously her location is really good. She's in Las Vegas. Um, but if you're in LA, if you're in Sacramento, do some research to look at where, where it's going to be the most profitable. You're probably going to go to a lot of open houses. But, you know, that's, that's the name of the game. So you want to make sure these pictures are super high, uh, uh, you know, photogenic. I invested in some patio furniture. In hindsight, I would never invest in white furniture again. But you know, you know what they say, hindsight. Um, and when I was um, researching how I should do my decor, so I was trying to figure out how can I stand out yet still maintain the standard, right? So I was looking at the area that I was in. So I was near basically Riverside. And so there were pretty, um, I would say like more neutral, minimalistic, boring uh, type of uh, uh, things. So I decorated it to be way more uh, whimsical and feminine, I guess. So this was the house I got. The exterior was really great, but it's just the decor wasn't really, you know, super duper amped up. And then, oh, I didn't even show you guys after. Um, so this was the after, right? So getting a good carpet, getting some good furniture, making sure that the house is cohesive can really help you get booked. Because if it was like the on the left right now, no offense to my previous landlady, she was amazing. But, you know, just spend a little bit more effort looking on Pinterest. Um, if you have a staging consultant, awesome. But don't skip on this because this is going to help you get booked. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to see this, but I'll say it anyway. You know, August uh found the place september signed the contract mid september paid the deposit late september moved in and then did the final cleaning and then listed on airbnb first booking was basically october uh second and third booking october 2nd first guest stays smart lock in installed and then super host. So as you can see, once you get started, things can move very, very fast for you. But you need to make sure it's an attractive enough property to get somebody to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to click on that because they clicked mine um, over the other ones. And the first thumbnail is just super duper important. And even in the patio, like spend some time making sure that it's decked out and good. And, you know, for me, it's like, oh, my God. But I'm grateful for it. You know, I'm making fun of it. But it, it was a huge learning experience. But I want to show you guys because it's totally doable. And um, I know you guys didn't ask for day report tips. But this is going to help you get booked. You know, like focus on two to three photogenic areas. I found my real estate photographer on Thumbtack. Some of you guys probably already have photographers. And then look at your competition and figure out how to stand 
out. You don't have to go feminine if you don't want to, but just like look at what is missing. You want an experience that is not based on price because everyone can always race to the bottom. And I'm just not, you can if you want, but you're just going to get, in my experience, a lot of problem people. I don't know if you guys want a budget breakdown, but here it is. So I spent around um, 9K for a total of three bedrooms and three bathrooms, like patio furniture. In hindsight, I, I would have probably spent less on patio furniture and went more on like probably used furniture, not the mattress, but maybe some of the chairs and stuff. But I really did want to impress. I think fake plants were a great investment. Um, and if you can have everything shipped to you via Amazon and Ikea, please do that. Um, but look for inspiration. And this was like the theme that I tried to do. You can make your bedding stand out and you can, you know, buy little pillow poofs and colorful pops because you want them to pop on the video. No, not the video, on, on the listing. And if you want to hire a cleaner, make sure the instructions are really good as well. Um, make sure the bathroom is clean. Just stick to white. Like, don't make your life harder. Um, just stick to white towels because you can just throw it in the washer and just bleach it and you're going to be okay. And um, let's talk a little bit about pricing because part of getting booked is making sure that you're pricing it correctly. So I use Price Labs. Price Labs is basically looking at all the hotels and they literally just give you, hey, these are the prices that we have. So as you can see, like Sunday through Thursday is like a certain rate. And obviously, you know, the, the fourth, third, fourth, whatever week of Thanksgiving, it's way higher, right? So you don't want to price every day the same because a grill is different on 4th of July than in the middle of February, just a random February day, unless it's like your anniversary or something, right? So Price Lab is 20 bucks. I highly recommend it just so that you know what's there. You know, even if you don't choose to use it, you can price whatever you want. But if you have the right pricing, if it's, you know, pretty much good, I think in the beginning, don't price too low because your first three people already have a 20% discount on Airbnb. So you want to make sure that um, you still also make a profit. I would, I would just say go a little bit on the higher end because when you have a new listing, Airbnb is trying to bump you up. You know, price high on weekends, lower on Monday through Thursdays. If they have a longer stay, give a discount and basically under, undercut your competitors in the beginning, but don't like have no profit, you know? So this is not like an exact science, but having Priceline as a guide really helps you see, okay, this is one of the options and you can see different trends and different data. You can do higher or lower up to you. And I would say for the first three guests, like no request is too ridiculous. Just do it. Um, unless it's something totally out of your power. I've driven back to the Airbnb to give them another remote because the remote was in the drawer and they still give me a four star, but you know, at least I still have the super host. So think about your customer service and think about how you would want to be treated. Sometimes these people are crazy, but you just have to keep the goal in mind. You don't want to default into a lose-lose situation and always be calm and reasonable and has, as hospitable as you possibly can. So I'm going to share with you guys the bookings that I got. So as you can see, I wasn't even booked that much. So around October, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the first month I already had eight bookings, right? So that put me a lot in ease because I wasn't there like all the time. It was like mostly the weekends but I didn't have a cleaner at that time, but I was still basically cleaning and I was flipping. I was like doable. And then the next month, November, I had more long-term bookings as well. But by then I already had 10 trips, right? So you guys can see it is totally doable within three months to just get the super host status. Um, unless you price it wrong or you're in the wrong area, which we talked a little bit about in the beginning, you should technically be okay. 
And then December, I had less people. And December is also the month that I found out that I had to uh, stop my Airbnb because the HOA was like, you can't do this. So lesson, please, please don't deal with HOAs. <clears throat> I think I already talked about this. I had an extra slide. So make sure you guys are paying attention. So in summary, and it is 631, <clears throat> almost, almost perfect timing. Have great photos, great descriptions. Price it to book for quality guests. Answer messages ASAP and basically never cancel. So, woo, I'm going to get a drink of water. But um, that concludes the actual PowerPoint. And obviously, I didn't go through everything. This is just to let you know that it's possible for you to be super host. And if you want me to coach you personally, tell you when to do what, what furniture to do, um, just email me at li at li-lin.net with a subject line Airbnb coaching. You can just talk to me first. You know, you want to see if we're a good match personality wise. And um, if that's a goal that you want to reach, let me know. Thank you, V. Appreciate it. Um, does anybody have any questions? So there were some people who just came in. I don't know if you guys are completely lost. Um, I'm going to send the V. You sent me an email to send you the. Um, the PowerPoint, and I don't know where I copy and pasted it. I'll just copy, and then Bree, you also asked me to do that. Okay, awesome. So I guess you guys have no questions at all. No. Uh, um, I, I'm yes. sorry. I just have a small question. Sure. Uh, uh, do you think if I sign up with different websites, like for example, there I hear there's like another website like similar to Airbnb. Do you think that will be helpful, or you think Airbnb, if I keep focusing on it, I'll get like more listings? That's a good question. So I listed with Verbo. I had a horrible experience with Verbo because their customer support is like just not very helpful. Um, they're always on like the client side, no matter how unreasonable the guests are. So I did get like a few bookings through it and maybe it's just my area, but I think, yeah, if you want to try it out, I would try it out. Make sure that you're not double booked. So there's a software, I, I forget what, but basically there's a software that makes sure that you don't get double booked, but from the beginning, yeah, you can, you can try it out. Verbo and HomeAway, that's like, um the most famous i guess but um yeah i i think you should try it out just see what works for you but just be careful not to be overbooked and not to be um you know ov overwhelmed because sometimes your customer service may be uh, lacking I see, I see. well thank you so much and i already just text i just sent you my email if you can just send me the presentation thank you very much okay awesome thank you thank great you. awesome you guys are Okay, somebody says you mentioned scripts for convincing somebody to rent for an Airbnb. Yes, um, I do that more in my individual coaching. So, um, but if you have any more like questions, like just just email me. Yes, um, but it's kind of outside of the scope of like this one because this is just more Airbnb super host. But yeah, I do. Can you share the rent scripts for Airbnb? Okay, Punama got your email. Uh, v, do you primarily do Airbnb rental arbitrage in the Orange County area? Were you able to own your property in OCO made the clash over? Okay, so I have um, a long-term rental in Palm Springs, and I Airbnb'd in Harupa Valley in Riverside. So I'm still trying to find my second Airbnb location um, and probably just do some deals at a realtor. So with Orange County, you need to be careful. It's legal because um orange county is just notoriously just ah you can't even paint the walls because uh we're irvine company so do your research um there are certain cities in orange county that allow airbnb so for example laguna beach allows you for like 30 days or 31 days or something um but obviously laguna beach is way more expensive right um I think Riverside is a little bit more relaxed on that, but don't quote me on this. Like do your research for your specific city, but LA and OC is kind of strict, um, but they're 
there's there's always you know leeways and worse comes to worse you can drive a little bit further out into other areas and actually i i do think the reason why i was able to get super host faster was because i did go for like a higher level like more luxurious look airbnb in a more lower end area sorry uh inland empire people but i i hope you guys know what i mean because sometimes if you position yourself as the best in a more second tier area you're going to get booked faster because in the first tier area is you have so much competition people are already established they can undercut your prices but if you go a little bit further out you may actually do better so that that's my thoughts on it um does anybody have any question so the scripts um I'm just going to email you guys. Let me know what your situation is and I'll go for that. Can you send me a lot of the scripts for rental arbitrage? Send them. What were your rates for coaching? So I am, I still need to establish the, the rates as well. If you want to do a package rate or just a uh, one-on-one, -on -one. but yeah, I can answer that via email as well. I have a lot of emails to catch up on today. So cool. So it's, 637. I don't know if you guys want to network with each other. I'm going to wait for probably three more minutes. I don't know if anyone's coming in late. Um, sometimes I come in late after 30 minutes. I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to sip my water. Anybody have any questions? Or should I just add you guys to the email list? For the people who said yes, you guys want me to add, add you to an email list? Because I need to be building that up as well. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. Okay, cool. So I will just email you guys. Uh -huh. and, then and, uh, and to check with the, to check if the house is like, uh, okay with Airbnb, do you, do you just go to the city and ask them about it? Or there's like a specific website? Sorry about it. Yeah, no problem. So... For Orange County, there was like a list of what was okay and what was not online, but you can also just call the city. Calling the city. I see. Yeah, it's like more definite, but you know, you know how the city is. They just never want to answer anything. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Looking at your questions. Okay, more more emails. Okay, perfect. Cool. So uh okay, two more messages. Pitfalls to avoid besides what you already mentioned. That's a good question. Um, definitely don't go for HOA. So the person, another person that I know, he actually works with the HOA, so they're okay with it. But he's a more seasoned realtor. But I would say just avoid Airbnbs. Um, I would say first three clients, make sure that they're good people who are not going to like fleece you and complain about a hair on the pillow. Um, find a good cleaner, find a good photographer. But I would say just get started. Like if I knew this was doable, I would have just started way earlier. So I would say just start. If it's truly horrible, you can always take off your listing or convert it to our long-term rental because it's real estate. It's flexible, you know. All right. Um, oh, wow. You guys can draw on this. Do you then avoid discount for the first few rentals? That's a good question. Um, I priced, so mine was a three bedroom with like another bed. So it's almost like a four bedroom. I priced it at 250 in the beginning. So that was kind of higher than the other houses, but I had an extra bedroom and I felt like if it's going to be four people, they can pay me 40 bucks. That shouldn't be a huge problem because a lot of people were raving. Um, they were visiting family. So yeah, I would say don't do like rental because they're going to discount you 20% anyways. So, um, but you know, your area is going to be different. So I would think about making sure that it's a little bit higher um but just it it's it depends right I'm, I'm sorry to say it depends but it kind of does um but i would say rather price high i would rather you price high because people's perception is also oh if it's cheap and it's like 
what's wrong with this? You know, is there something wrong with the foundation? Is there something wrong? It's like the higher you price, actually, the more people see it as premium, you know, but also it has to look premium, you know. Hi, Linda. All right. Awesome. Uh, so Linda, I'm a notary public. Awesome. Loan signing agent in West Hollywood, servicing the surrounding areas. I'm also a newly licensed real estate agent. If you have any questions, because you might service. Awesome. Thank you, Linda. So it's Garrett linda and at gmail.com how do you find a good reliable cleaning crew for each area you invest in that's a really good question i i was not able to find a good cleaner unfortunately um but i would say it's easier to find cleaners in in places that have a lot of metropolitan activity so riverside is actually harder to find good cleaners because there's not that much demand for it right so I would say a lot of it is interview experience and maybe you just do a trial run before you hire them. So that would be my advice. So, man, my voice is giving, I can never be a school teacher. It's like crazy. No problem. Anytime. Awesome. So I'm going to copy paste everyone's emails and I'm going to be sending it out. If not tonight, then by tomorrow. Thank you so much. And I'll put it on recording and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.